You know, if nothing else, you have to commend the CW on their sheer fucking persistence when it comes to Batwoman. Any other production company faced with ratings lower than your average laxative commercial. Jesus, half of my videos get more views than this. Disastrous review scores, a tidal wave of online mockery from every functioning human with a YouTube channel, and the well-publicized departure of its main star at the end of the first season would probably have taken roughly three seconds to assess the situation situation before rightfully deciding, fuck it, we're pulling the plug on this shit. And honestly, there would have been no shame in that. Not every show is destined for success. Some are too cerebral, too niche, too far ahead of their time, or just too shit. And in situations like that, there's nothing else to do except take your failure on the chin, cut your losses, and move on. Clearly, the CW are made of dumber, sorry, sterner stuff than that. I mean, it's not like they have about two dozen other garbage tier shows in desperate need of more funding, resources, and better writers that might have been freed up by the cancellation of this absolute stinker. Nah, we've got to keep the Batwoman hype train running at all costs, chaps. Yes, I can definitely smell shite. <laughs> but their financial loss is our cultural gain, especially when the great minds at the CW W <laughs> announced the casting of a brand new Batwoman to replace Ruby Rose. <laughs> I don't think any of us were quite prepared for that first promo image of her. She looks almost as excited to be in this show as we are to see her in it. But the best was yet to come, as I learned the other day when we were finally treated to the first proper trailer for the upcoming season 2. And what a treat it was! Honestly, I haven't laughed so much since my mate Crazy Dave took one line too many and tried kissing a food blender. So let's take a look at this work of pure creative genius and see if we can unravel the fiendish delights that await us. The trailer begins in the sewers of Gotham City, which seems oddly appropriate considering this entire show is basically one big pile of HUMAN excrement. And we're immediately joined by the acting powerhouse that is Alice. Fuck me, is this plank of wood still alive? Forget your classic antagonists like the Joker, or Bane, or Two-Face. This vacant, dead-eyed simpleton truly is the epitome of everything that this show represents. Anyway, Alice is singing a lullaby to herself about Batwoman being missing now. Wherever could she have gone? I love how major characters conveniently go missing whenever the writers can't be arsed thinking up a good exit for them. If this show somehow makes it to a third season, I'd expect a lot more people to inexplicably go missing. But there's still a few turds clinging to the side of the toilet bowl. Discount Morgan Freeman is having a good pant-wetting cry. Maybe he saw some of the reviews for season one. Either way, getting all teary-eyed seems to be the thing that defines basically every character in shows like this. They're either crying, or discussing why they cried, or preparing themselves for the next satisfying round of crying. Reminds me of Star Trek Discovery now that I think about it. Weirdly, Dougray Scott is also hanging around, claiming that he hasn't given up hope of his daughter coming back. Well, Dougray, Ruby Rosie's agent would probably beg to differ on that one. I guess he hasn't quite plucked up the courage to go missing yet, although it does make me wonder why, when this show is basically where careers go to die. Either the CW paid him a ridiculous amount of money to keep humiliating himself in a TV show that's only marginally better than a daytime soap opera, or he was dumb enough to get himself locked into a contract more ironclad than a Civil War battleship. Whatever the reason, he's absolutely wasted in this goofy assortment of has-beens and never-will-bees, and it's kind of sad to see him reduced to this. I remember when Dougray Scott was still considered a hot prospect in Hollywood, starring in big-budget movies and commanding millions of dollars per role. It's time to get a new agent, I think, mates. Meanwhile, Ruby Rosie's sister Mary is complaining that Gotham needs a Batwoman. No kidding, Mary. Gotham needed a Batman, and look what it got instead. <laughs> But fear not, dear viewer, because a new hero has arisen to take up the cheap plastic mantle and ridiculous pink wig. You know, I can't help but feel it's somehow appropriate that she first dons the Batwoman costume in a public lavatory. I don't know if this was an unintentionally hilarious piece of fecal symbolism or a subconscious cry for help on the part of the writers. I mean, imagine being lumbered with the task of hammering together some kind of coherent narrative from a show like Batwoman. Personally, I'd rather work for the Mary Sue. 
But just when you think it's finally hit creative bedrock, the show somehow finds a way to sink even deeper. Remember that infamous line from Ruby Rose back in season 1 that had pretty much the entire internet simultaneously crying with laughter and cringing so hard that their spines practically folded themselves in half? Is literal perfection. It will be. When it fits a woman. Well, I do believe we found ourselves a new champion. Time to be powerful. If I was a cynical man, I'd point out that the more a person talks about being strong and powerful, the less likely they are to be either of those things. Shit man, Tywin Lannister said it better than I ever could. Any man who must say I am the king is no true king. The point is that it makes her seem like a desperate wannabe, trying to fake her way into something she absolutely isn't cut out for. Which, I guess is pretty accurate when you think about it. We're now reduced to rooting for a copycat of a cheap knockoff of a once great comic book hero. If this is some kind of cunning metaphor for the slow degradation of our culture in an environment of endless cash grabs and creatively bankrupt reboots, then fucking hats off to you guys, maybe you're better writers than I thought. Anyway, I guess it's time to show Batwoman 2.0 in action, if you can call it that. Cue more awkward fight scenes in a rubber suit with extremely accommodating stuntmen who dutifully go down from a single punch by a hundred pound woman like they just took a first round haymaker from Tyson Fury. And of course, it wouldn't be Batwoman without an obligatory reference to her sexuality. Cue the bat symbol dressed up in pride colours during a big demonstration. Thanks for that little reminder, CW. I guess the fact that basically every episode of the previous season revolved around some tedious romance just wasn't enough of a hint. Pair all this up with ridiculous shots of a walking emoji being chased down by the Batmobile that looks like someone took a budget sports car from the mid-2000s, covered it in superglue and ram-raided it through Halfords, and the obligatory girl power moment where Batwoman 2.0 stamps down her authority on discount Morgan Freeman before he runs off for his next crying session. And you've got all the makings of an epic clusterfuck that'll make the first season look like a Werner Herzog film in comparison. And what I truly admire about this trailer is just how seriously the show still manages to take itself. Despite the mockery and ridicule coming at it from all sides, the complete lack of acting talent on display, the cringeworthy dialogue, the soap opera storylines, and the fight choreography straight out of a 1990s sci-fi channel original, they're still bravely clinging to the belief that Batwoman really is a dark, gritty, grounded, and believable superhero show to rival the very best in the genre. <laughs> that these ludicrous cardboard cutout characters, portrayed by ham-fisted actors, actually resonate with people on a deep emotional level, that they're crafting a complex, meaningful and epic face-off between good and evil. It's like the entire show is some hilarious joke that everyone except the CW are in on. And to be honest, there's something kind of impressive about that level of self-delusion. It's like the angry middle-aged woman complaining on social media that potential suitors are intimidated by her strong personality without ever considering the possibility that maybe she's just a boring self-absorbed arsehole. But one thing that isn't impressive is the wider point that this show raises. When I think about all the awesome TV shows over the years that were cut down in their prime because they didn't quite hit their ratings target, which incidentally was way higher than this show reached at the very peak of its popularity, or all the great ideas with huge potential that could have been commissioned with the money flushed down the drain on this show, all of them a hundred times better written, more complex, thoughtful, creative and accomplished than Batwoman could ever hope to be. Well, it's kind of a kick in the nuts to realise that garbage like this will keep getting renewed for no other reason than because it ticks the right boxes and pushes the right messaging. And really, that's what we have now. That's what our entertainment has become. But hey, at least it's fun to point and laugh at. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.